Ooh, you've got a really arched lower back. That's going to cause back pain. So, an increased arch in the lower back is called hyperlordosis. So, hyper meaning excessive. And um, this is something which we've spoken about before that's linked to the anterior pelvic tilt of the pelvis, where the pelvis tips forward, which can increase the arch of the lower back. The reality is everyone is different. I see all sorts of backs in clinic. I see some flat backs. I see some hyperlordotic backs. I see some relatively normal ones. And I've not overly seen too much correlation between, you know, who's having back pain, who isn't, and so on. You see a lot of variance in reality. So is there any merit to this uh, pelvic uh, position or this lumbar position causing any problems in back pain? They did an MRI scan on 27 people who have back pain. And then they got 19 patients and 10 volunteers with no known back pain to compare the difference between people who have pain and their actual low doses amount, their arch and their lower back amounts. What they found is there was no difference between age groups with the amount of low doses they had or didn't have, how much arch they had. So some of the ideas that it changes with age maybe have been debunked from this particular study. Um, the next thing they found was there was more low doses, more arch in the men than the women. Now this makes sense because we know that there's an association, not directly, but certainly uh, has some relationship between anterior pelvic tilt. And we know that more men have anterior pelvic tilt than women. So this makes sense. So the hyperlordosis was no different in women, whether they had pain or didn't have pain. So basically this doesn't seem to be correlated. Their arch itself doesn't seem to have any bearing on whether they suffer pain or not. However, what was interesting is in the men, they actually did find that there was a lack of lordosis. So they were actually flatter in their lower backs um, by a, a small amount in the back pain sufferer group. But they did say this was clinically insignificant. So therefore probably not really a big finding. So anyway, that's it for this video and I'll see you next time.